Hi everybody and welcome back to A Dinosaur in the Library. I'm Dawn and thank you for showing up to listen to me ramble about books. And if you've never been here before, welcome to the little strange kingdom. And if you have been here before, thank you for returning. And so today I'm going to be doing my life in books. And there's two of these floating around. One of them is my life in books tag, which I started to do one time and haven't actually finished doing and filming. And then there's this, which I saw on Karis's channel, which I will link below. And I'm not sure this one had an originator or creator. And if it did, I will get it from her channel and link it um, as well. But essentially, you just pick books off your shelves or books in general that you've read that um, have significance to your life or to parts of your life. And you just talk about them. So what do I do better than talk about books? Um, I did leave two areas of my life. I kind of broke these down into loose categories. Some of them are in just in a catch-all. But two categories I specifically left out um, because I'm going to do their own videos. Um, they need their own videos. So I'm not really including the LGBTQ books that have most influenced me. And I'm not including the books about OCD, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, because both of those topics, I'm going to make a video all on their own. Um, the LGBTQ, I'm going to wait till June because that's Pride Month. And I'll do the OCD one at some point. Um, I don't have copies of those books and I really would like to reread them and talk about them more in depth so I may wait until a little later in the year. But that is to say that there are a lot of things missing from these from this list of books that certainly um, influenced me and may have influenced me even more than the ones I'm listing now but they are coming in a later video. So I'll just go ahead and get started. The first set I have is books from my childhood. So um, these first two I the first three or four I actually don't have copies of anymore and that pains me greatly. Uh, the first one is The Monster at the End of This Book and that was actually written by John Stone but everyone uh, will probably recognize it as the Grover book and I love Grover so much. I have long said that um, I am Grover is my soulmate. I am most like Grover and especially Super Grover. We're both really want to save the world but we keep bumping into things and you know the blue hair doesn't hurt the uh, comparison, even though this looks kind of weird in this light. Oh, it's supposed to be blue. Anyway, uh, the next book is Bedtime Bears Book of Bedtime Poems. It's a little blue book, and I had this as a little bitty kid, and I loved it. It was one of my first, it was my first poetry book ever, and it was just amazing. And then the Gnome Counting Book. I'm obsessed with gnomes, always have been. Um, David Gnome, all these things like this. And I have, you know, the big art book from the, from the 80s, um, late 70s, the Gnome book. Uh, I loved those books. I wish I still had them. Then the next set I do actually have. Um, the first one is, this is not one of the ones I had when I was a kid, but it is the only one I have to represent. And that's the Babysitter's Club. Uh, this is the prequel. I bought this a couple of years ago when it came out, but I read so many Babysitter's Club books and not that they had this huge influence on my life but I spent a lot of time as a kid reading those. Um, I read them really a long time up into junior high and later probably just because I really enjoyed them. They were a fun read. They were something um, you know light that you could kind of and they were familiar. It was familiar friends and people that you recognized and I absolutely loved those books. So yeah. Baby Sitter's Club was definitely one of the better ones. Then this book, The Doll in the Garden by Mary Downing Hahn. And I don't know why this book stuck with me so much. All I know is that I remember learning what consumption was because I read this book. And it was slightly creepy. Um, and I've always been kind of a fan of horror. And this was some of the earliest um, scary stories that I read. Then also, of course, Madeline Ingalls, A Wrinkle in Time. And I actually really like this edition. I'm going to get all of them in this edition of the Time Quintet. I only have a couple of them right now. I need to get the rest of them. But I do love A Wrinkle in Time. It has to do with time travel and that sort of thing. And of course, that is way up my alley. This is just, yeah. This was one of my earlier uh, finds uh, with time travel. And I absolutely loved it. And another book just kind of random that stuck with me, Afternoon of the Elves by Janet Taylor Liesel. And even though my family wasn't quite in this, wasn't in the same situation as uh, Sarah Kate's family in this book, I absolutely loved the fact that there was a family represented in not a horrible way that was very, very poor and was not your cookie cutter, pretty two-story house mom and dad, um, you know, little brother, little sister kind of 
family because, you know, not everybody's family is like that. And mine was closer to Sarah Kate's and Hillary's uh, family in this book. And so I absolutely loved this. Another book that I loved, it was probably the very first book that ever made me sob uncontrollably, and that is Where the Red Fern Grows. And if you've never read Where the Red Fern Grows, I will not spoil anything for you, but suffice it to say, please, if you are going to read this book, and you should, definitely have some tissues nearby. And this is a used copy that I picked up a couple of years ago just because I really wanted to have one. Um, but it's been written on, it was a kid's edition, well, I mean it's a kid's book, but it was owned by some kids who wrote in it. And, everything but it was very cheap so that's why I have this copy but eventually I'll have a nice copy um it's been around for quite some time my third grade teacher and after you read this or if you've already read this you're gonna wonder why a third grade teacher would be that mean but my third grade teacher Mrs. Clifton read this out loud to us and I remember sobbing like a baby such a good book though such a good book okay um the other ones for childhood oh the other set I'm gonna mention here is um, a series that I read in early high school, late junior high school, and that's the Freshman Dorm series. They were horrible books. I mean, they were like a grown-up college edition of the Babysitter's Club, really, but, you know, they had, there were problems, you know, one of the girls got pregnant, and, you know, somebody had a, a wreck on a bike, you know, it was, it's on a motorcycle, it was just one of those things, but I loved that series. I remember my hometown did not have a bookstore. We, no, there was, We've never had, I mean, I think there's one there now, but it's very small. Um, the library was always great, but the only place you could really buy books was maybe at yard sales or the Walmart. And this was not a Walmart super center. This was an old school, like regular small Walmart. And we had the little book aisle and they carried these books. So I would go and every time I had a little bit of money and I could, I would go buy them. And my friends and I would, I remember swapping them back and forth with a friend of mine and they were just... If I read them now, I'd probably be horrified that I ever really liked those books, but I, I did. I absolutely loved them. So the next set of books I'm going to list are things about Alabama. And even though my blessed home state is run by a bunch of complete morons, I really do love my home state and I really do think it's one of the most beautiful places ever. And I would love for it to get straightened out to the point that I could live there eventually and work there and help the people that I would like to help. Um, right now that's really not possible, but you know, in any case, it um, it's a big part of my life and I really do love uh, a lot of parts about Alabama. So I, of course, am including them in this series. And the first two books I have are actually about my hometown. And it's some of those things that are very, very local. Um, this was sold, I think, at the museum in town. My mom got it for me. It's a history of Sylacauga, and I'm from Sylacauga, Alabama. And it's just a book about, you know, this one's by Philip G. Mazel. And it's just about, you know, it's very text heavy. It's very um, museum kind of book. But it's just about the founding of the town, um, just the different history, different things about the town. And then my town is famous for exactly a three things. One, we are the home of Jim Neighbors, who graduated from my high school. If you don't know who he is, he played Gomer Pyle on The Andy Griffith Show and Gomer Pyle USMC. He also put out um, quite a number of albums as far as I know. He's a very beautiful voice. But yeah, so he's from my hometown. Number two, we are home to some of the purest white marble in the world, which has been used by sculptors. It was in the, it's in, I think it's in the... Washington Monument. I'm not sure. But anyway, there's that. And then number three, we are home of the only recorded instance of a meteorite striking a human being. And that's the meteorite that hit Ms. Hodges. And it's a very sordid tale. And if you guys want to hear it sometime, maybe I'll look up some stuff about it and we'll have a good old fashioned storytelling session about Ms. Hodges and the meteorite. But point is, the other book is all about Silicaga Marble. Is a brief history of Silicaga Marble. This is, um, a statue that is outside of a neat well it was outside the museum the last time I was home um, it has moved at least once so I don't know if it's still there and then this one I actually wrote a poem about this one for class this was supposed to be commemorating the aforementioned meteorite striking earth um, which is pretty pretty apropos I think being made out of marble from our hometown but it's just all about um, the marble quarry that's there and different things like that and the next one is 13 Alabama Ghosts and Jeffrey by Catherine Tucker Wyndham and Margaret Gillis Figg. And if you don't know who Catherine Tucker Wyndham is, she is an amazing storyteller. Um, she 
has since passed on, unfortunately, but she has an entire series of books, 13 Alabama Ghosts and Jeffrey, um, 13 more Alabama Ghosts and Jeffrey, 13 Georgia Ghosts, Tennessee, Mississippi, I think Louisiana. Anyway, so it's all um, stories from around these areas that are supposed to be true. They are stories that, you know, people have, you know, I know people who have seen the things that happened um, in these, I mean, not the actual events, but have seen the, like there's one of a ghost face in a window in a courthouse. And I know someone who's seen that. Um, this, there's one, my favorite one, the hole that would not be filled, which can be construed as dirty and get your mind out of the gutter. It's an actual hole in the ground. Um, but it's a really, it always creeped me out, but it's my favorite story. And my mom actually just gave me this copy a couple of days ago. So I'm very excited to finally have another copy of it uh, because I love Catherine Tucker Wyndham. I've heard her speak. She is a great storyteller. There's I know there's several videos of her on uh, YouTube and if I can remember to I will link one below so that you can check her out but she is amazing and she is a treasure of my home state and then I th okay there's three more so this this one is this is an ex library copy that I got from better world books I don't really like I didn't know it was an ex library copy when I ordered it um, I should have because better world books but anyway I didn't realize it would be I ordered it because I thought it would have the jacket and I really love the picture that's on the front. But this is Milking the Moon, a Southerner's story of life on this planet by Eugene Walter as told to Catherine Clark. And Eugene Walter is just this absolutely fabulous uh, man from Mobile and he lived all over the world and wrote for the Parish Review when it first started. And he's just amazingly, hilariously funny. So if you ever get a chance to read Milking the Moon, you absolutely should. It's easier to find than a lot of his other stuff. And um, I just I just think he's fabulous. And he's from Mobile. And if you've ever seen the picture, which I can't get to it right at the second, if you've ever seen the picture of the gravestone on my bookshelf behind me at some point, um, that's his gravestone. So I'll have to talk about him more in another video as well. Um, another one is Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg. And she is from Alabama. She actually... Um, I mean, I know people who know her. She's really... I mean, most people have seen this movie, but I absolutely love this book for multiple reasons, but it's great. And then this one is She Walks These Hills by Sharon McCrum. And this is not set in Alabama. This is actually set in Tennessee and North Carolina, um, mainly in Tennessee. But I read this in a multicultural literature class the first time I came to college, so right out of high school. And it never occurred. I mean, I know all the stories and tales and, you know, traditions of Appalachian culture um, because my grandmother told me a lot of them. And I pick them up, you know, from great aunts and things like that. But it never occurred to me to think of it as an, a separate culture. You know, it's just one of those things that's family. But taking that class, it um, allowed me to see my own culture as something that was special and um, that should be thought of as a culture. Because, you know, I, it, a lot of people think of some things as, you know, like old hill superstition and things like that. But... It, and a lot of people don't know them, but that's the thing. Nobody knows it. So it's something that I could contribute in that class that a lot of people didn't know. And it made me see my um, heritage in an entirely different way. Um, and I really loved that book for that. So yeah, that's all the ones about Alabama and the South that I have. And the rest of these are just generally books that have obsessed me in some way, have um, stuck with me in some way, or have been just a chunk of my life. So that is the case in the next one. Um, when I was an undergraduate, I did an undergraduate honors thesis, which is essentially the undergraduate version of doing a master's thesis. It's not as quite as intense, but you still do have to defend it. Um, you have to have a committee and all that. And mine was on um, evangelical Christian women's groups, um, because one of my degrees is in comparative religion. And um, this was actually for the women's studies department, but it tied together. And this was pretty much the she this author was pretty much the patron saint of my thesis uh it's quiverful inside the christian patriarchy movement by katherine joyce and my thesis focused on quiverful um which is tied to um if you know who the duggars are 
on TLC, 19 Kids and Counting, that sort of culture, and they did actually make it into my thesis. I watched a lot of 19 Kids and Counting, even though it wasn't 19 at the time, um, in order to do this, and it had a lot to do with purity culture and things like this. Um, if anybody's interested, let me know below, and I will do an entire video about Quiverful, this book, and a few others that are tied to this, because it seems like a lot of people are interested in this topic and are fascinated by the train wreck that is the Duggars occasionally. Um, or that people think is the train wreck that is the Duggars. I'm, I'm making no judgment calls there. But if anybody's interested, let me know. And I will be happy to do an entire video about this because this was a really fascinating topic and I really missed this research. It was a lot of fun. Even if it was slightly scary on occasion for multiple reasons. So the rest of these are just books that have stuck with me for various reasons. Uh, this was probably my first full-length grown-up um, horror novel that I read and that's it by Stephen King and this poor patched copy has made it into my videos multiple times at this point and I absolutely love it. It is probably my favorite Stephen King novel um, bar none really um, thinking about it. The other ones are good and they come in second and third but this this one is my favorite and it was the first Stephen King I ever read. It was also um, like I said the first grown-up horror novel I read all by myself and I loved this book and I've read it about a million times. Uh, the next we have The Time Machine, which as I have said multiple times, I'm sure you're tired of hearing it, this is my favorite book of all time and is what got, is what got me into time travel and science fiction in general and has created a deep obsession with time travel in me. So anything that has to do with time travel, I'm on it. And that's H.G. Wells' fault. And then my very first, which I had read some fantasy before, I read things like A Wrinkle in Time, which is, you could argue is sort of sci-fi, but I read a lot of fantasy, um, you know, kids fantasy, things like that. But my first, like, fantasy fantasy was J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, and I've also shown this copy before. This was, this is the, um, this is not the exact book, you know, the exact copy copy, but this is the edition that I was given um, for my 12th birthday. I got a boxed set of Hobbit and the trilogy, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, for my stepdad for my birthday that year, and I just absolutely loved it, and I finally traded my brother so I could have this edition because I love this edition so much because it was my very first Tolkien, so that. And then I only have like three books left, guys, I promise. This is a really long video. And this one, um, I've talked about Anne Rice before, The Vampire Chronicles. This happens to be, um, it's one of my two favorites, but there's a line in here that stuck with me, and Lestat is in one of the chapels in New Orleans, and he says, he, he lights a candle, and he says, you know, haven't I, by this simple act, increased the sum total of light in the universe? Um, that's not an exact quote, but it kind of, um, it fits with my whole life philosophy of, you know, I may be just one little person, but I can do something, so it's kind of the reason I have this, and maybe just a flicker, but I persist, a flicker like a candle, um, bridging out of arguments uh, with my wife and other friends about how one person can or cannot save the world. And so this book, it didn't create my life philosophy, but it certainly um, melded into it very well, or that part of it, or that part of the book melded into it very well. And so I love it for that. And of course it's Lestat. So Lestat, of course, is a part of my life. Of course. And this one, I found a copy of this book in a strange thrift store in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, I was going back and forth for doctor's appointments for various reasons, and I just happened upon it, and it was really cheap, so I picked it up. It's called The Hundredth Monkey, and it's by Ken Keyes Jr., and the front says, there is no cure for nuclear war, only prevention, and it's all about um, the prevention of nuclear war, nuclear arms, proliferation, all that. But the interesting part is this. This book is not copy. This, this is probably what made me purchase it the first time. Um, this book is not copyrighted. You are asked to reproduce it in whole or in part to distribute it with or without charge in as many languages as possible to as many people as possible. The rapid alerting of all humankind to nuclear realities is supremely urgent. If we are wiped out by nuclear destruction in the next few years, how important are the things we are doing today? And so this is uh, first edition was 1982. Um, and... I found that really interesting and the whole book talks about um, where the title came from is there's it's been a while since I've read it so there was an island that had monkeys on it and there was a separate island that had monkeys on it and they didn't really mix 
but the monkeys on one island started doing something new and once a certain number of them say a hundred um i think was the count obviously um began doing it it leapt to the other island so the other monkeys started doing it even though there had been no actual physical mixing of the two groups so it's this idea that once enough people in the world are doing something good for the world and doing something positive in the world that it will jump to the rest of the world and will increase the happiness and joy and um, decrease war and negative feelings so and then the last one I want to show is Beloved by Toni Morrison. And I read this book for the first time, um, the first time I came to college again in 98, I think was, I came in 97, but I think I read this one in 98 or 99. And it's just a wonderful book. If you've read it, you'll know what I mean. But there's a passage in here that I maintain is one of the most beautiful, wonderful passages in all of American literature, hands down. And I won't read the whole thing just because it's pretty long. Um, in my edition, it starts on page 87, but um, it's the plume edition. But uh, Baby Suggs is out in the woods and she's preaching and it is just a beautiful, beautiful scene and remains one of the most gorgeous things in American literature. And I've long said that if I could, I would love to have it tattooed in some way on my body, but it's a huge, huge passage and I'm not really sure how I'd manage that. Anyway, I think that is all of the books that I've got for this. Like I said, um, I did not include books about OCD or LGBTQ books, which obviously have a huge impact on my life, but I want to do them fully um, in their own video so that I can talk much more about them and talk um, longer about them because this video is already at 20 minutes so I think I've rambled on enough. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and if you've done a similar video let me know. I'd love to see what your life is like in books and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!